Good evening and welcome to another fantastic um, edition of um, Plus Spot. Today is definitely going to be an exciting moment on the show, as is always when it comes to Plus Spot. My name is Muda Shiyoshitu, and uh, we'll be looking at two important topics we'll be discussing today. First, we'll be looking at um, the ban of um, FIFA on former Nigerian under-17, Oji Okonko, who has been banned four years for taking a banned substance. Also, we have a very wonderful guest in the house, um, Rachel Samuel. She is the Vice President of Nigerian Fencing Federation. It's good to have you in the house. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me here. Yes. And uh, firstly, we will go straight to UK where um, we have Dr. Jimmy Osinaike, who is going to tell us the impact of the bad substance and um, what will happen next if um, Oji Okonko fail in his appeal as he wants to appeal FIFA four years banned on um, on him. So let's look at what the banned substance is and what to come after him. Um, Dr. Jimmy Osinaike, it's good to have you. This Nigerian footballer, uh, uh, and, and uh, a steroid was actually found uh, in his uh, uh, body specimen. And uh, that uh, uh, steroid is called Clostobol. So Clostobol is an androgenic steroid which mimics uh, uh, the metatosterone. Uh, this substance is actually banned by uh, the World Antidoping Agency. It is banned both in and out of competition. Uh, the footballer, you know, uh, said, I mean, based on what I read, that uh, he used this uh, particular uh, substance for any injury. And, uh, well, uh, I mean, we, we don't know, you know, what happened, who prescribed, you know, the medication, you know, for him, for any injury. But be that as it may, uh, permit me to say this, that uh, even if uh, an athlete would use a substance, a banned substance, a prudent substance for uh, medical reasons, there is something we call therapeutic use exemption. In other words, such an athlete must apply okay, to uh, the relevant National Anti-Doping Agency you know, for, a, for a therapeutic use exemption. And but, but however, before you can be granted that therapeutic exemption to use a prudent substance, there are certain criteria that must be met. Now, one of the criteria is that, uh, you know, uh, that particular substance can actually, you know, treat that particular condition. Uh, another of the criteria that must be met is that there are no other therapeutic alternatives. So, and what that means is that, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, two substances, and uh, uh, those two substances can actually treat this particular illness. If one of those substances is not banned, then we go for the one that is not banned, okay? Mm. And uh, there's also another criteria that uh, uh, if, you know, that such a substance must not, uh, uh, must only be able to heal the particular condition, it must not, uh, you know, improve the performance. So again, these these things must actually be ticked before you can even, you know, qualify for a therapeutic exemption. And the reason why, you know, I have to, you know, educate our audience is that, you know, the player have said he used this thing, you know, for knee injury. And I mean, if uh, the doctors, I don't know, you know, what uh, is doctors, what is health personnel, I don't know why they gave him that. I don't know where he got it from. I don't know how he got into, you know, that knee. But again, if it if he's arguing that it was for a medical reason, then you know in the court of law, then uh, they must be able you know to really argue that. And without you know a therapeutic exemption, okay, that argument you know would not be tenable. Uh, well, again, uh, based on that news uh, by BBC, I mean, he said he's going to uh, contest this decision in class. So fingers crossed. Uh, you know, let's see what's going to happen based on that decision. Again, what should uh, players do? What should athletes do generally? And number one, they should be aware of those prohibited substances. Now, these substances are always updated yearly. Uh, so therefore, they must have an up-to-date uh, information on which substances banned, which method, you know, are prohibited. Uh, you know, secondly, uh, in a case where an athlete feels that you know, a particular prohibited substance, okay, 
needs to be used for a medical condition, then there are provisions for that, and which is what I explained earlier on, that it must be a therapeutic use exemption and, uh, you know, those criteria must be met before, you know, that can be granted. Number three, you know, there have been cases of, you know, uh, you know, athletes taking, you know, uh, uh, supplements, you know, athletes taking food and, you know, these supplements of food have been contaminated. Now, yeah, I know people can always say, oh, I mean, I mean, how careful can somebody be? But again, athletes should be very, very weary, particularly when they take supplements. Nobody is against supplements. But, you know, we've, you know, we, we always advise that if, you know, they can do it with supplement, let them do it with it. Number four, you know, athletes generally must understand, you know, what other alternatives are there, you know, for them to, you know, uh, I mean, what other alternatives are there, you know, in terms of helping them to recover. Because, again, we've seen instances where athletes argue that the reason why they take these substances is for recovery. You know, after a sporting session, you know, uh, some argue that, OK, I've got an injury. I need to recover fast from these injuries. And, uh, you know, they are not aware of other alternatives that can help them. Okay. And they go, you know, use these prohibited substances. So athletes, you know, uh, footballers and whatever they are, they must, you know, on you know, know these other alternatives. And the reason why I'm emphasizing on this is that, you know, we can't just tell athletes, you know, uh, don't use these prohibited substances. We need to also tell them, okay, in fact, there are other things that can be used. For example, uh, if, for example, you're struggling with things like recovery, you know, if you're struggling with things like, okay, you've gotten injured and you want to come back to sport as soon as possible. Now, there are other things, there are other, you know, methods, there are other modalities, you know, that can also be used, okay? Yes, and that's um, Dr. Jimmy Osinaike. He's um, the IOC certified doctor in jokes, speaking about cluster ball and a banned substance that um, Nigeria, the same, former under 17 world champion, talking about Ojokal, used and it has been banned for four years.